Hi guys, this is Keith Galley, and in this video I'll be giving a brief explanation on asymptotic notation and its role in computer science and more specifically algorithms. So what is asymptotic notation? Well in computer science we often want to know how fast a program, process, or algorithm runs. However, this isn't always easy because each one of our computers has different hardware capabilities. As a result, Asymptotic notation was developed to provide a universal way to measure the speed and efficiency of an algorithm. The second part I think that is really important to remember about asymptotic notation is that it refers to large inputs. So what I mean by this is that imagine you are sorting 10 numbers. Maybe one algorithm works really well in these 10 numbers, but if you increase the size of the list of numbers that you tried to sort to 100 to 1000, maybe a second algorithm works a lot better. In asymptotic notation, we care about the behavior of an algorithm as the input size approaches infinity. So we care about these large inputs. Let's quickly go over the three most important notations that you will have to know when taking any sort of algorithms class. The first is O of n, also known as big O. What O of n represents is an upper bound. So if we had the function n, we could say that it is O of n squared because when we have a big input, any value evaluated at n would be less than that same value evaluated at n squared. So 10,000, for example, is always less than and upper bounded than 10,000 squared, etc. Next, we have theta of n. Theta of n represents a tight bound. So what this means is that, you know, in algorithms, we don't care about constants. We really just care about that asymptotic behavior. And when you have a really big input, you know, the constants don't really matter. So let's say we have the functions n, 3n, and 5n. Well, 3n is less than, is always going to be less than 5n. And n is always going to be less than 3n. So we could say this function 3n right here is tightly bounded by n. We could say that it is theta of n. So if we ignore these constants, it is lower bounded by a function of n, and it's upper valued, upper bounded by a function of n. So because it has this tight bound on n, we say it's theta of n. Finally, we'll look at omega of n. And as you might have guessed, this represents a lower bound. For an example, let's imagine that we had the functions n cubed and log of n. Whenever we plug in a value to n cubed, it is always going to be higher than that same value plugged, plugged into log n for big inputs. So we can say that n cubed is omega of log n. I apologize that this is a little bit messy. But to recap, O of n is an upper bound, theta of n is a tight bound, and omega of n is a lower bound. Remember these three things because you're going to use them a ton throughout any algorithms course. One thing that I think is important to note about asymptotic notation is that it, the convention is that you only care about the value in an expression that has the highest magnitude. So in this expression, that's n to the fifth. So when we were writing, if we said that a function was upper bounded by this expression, we would just say it is O of n to the fifth. While it wouldn't be wrong to say that it is O of n to the fifth plus four n to the cube plus two n plus five, that's just not how computer scientists write this notation because n to the fifth is the term that really dominates and controls this expression when you have a very large input.
As a simple example on asymptotic notation, let's imagine that we have two grocery lists. In the grocery list on the left, it is sorted alphabetically. So, it's, so you have the items that start with an A on the top and the items that start with a Z on the bottom. In the list on the right, it is sorted completely randomly. We don't know where any item will fall on that list. And let's say that we have a total of N items. All right, now we wanted to figure out which of these lists is a better way to, you know, make a grocery list. Is it more quick, quick to make it alphabetical or is it more quick to make it random? So let's say we are looking for a specific item such as cucumbers. In the list on the left, we can quickly find cucumbers by going to C's and seeing that cucumbers is right there. So we can say that it is lower bounded by a constant number of operations. And so as I mentioned in the previous slide, lower bound is represented by omega. So we could say that this is omega of one. One represents a constant number of operations. However, we might not always get so lucky to have cucumbers be sitting right there as the only item that begins with a C. Let's imagine that we had hundreds of thousands of items that began with a C on our grocery list. Let's say they're like, I don't know, I was shopping for a lot of people, so we had hundreds of thousands of C's. If this was the case, then simply going down to the C part of our grocery list wouldn't be enough to, you know, find cucumbers. We would have to go further and break our list down even further to find cucumbers. So we would maybe have to look at CU and try to figure out you know, what items begin with CU to find cucumbers. And then if we still had a lot of items that began with CU, we'd have to continue this process and break the list down even further into items that begin with CUC. The process of breaking down a list into smaller and smaller lists to sort through can be called or logarithmic time uh, in computer science. So we can say that this is upper bounded, and the upper bound is, is on the worst case scenario. So in the worst case scenario, we had a bunch of items that began with C, and maybe a bunch of them started with CUC and whatnot, and we had to continue this process for a while. So the upper bound of this is log of n. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, log of n can be denoted, denoted, the upper bound can be denoted with big O, this is big O, and we could say this is big O of log n. So this big O means upper bound. And log n is because there's n total items and each time we make a step further in trying to find cucumbers, we break the list down into smaller and smaller lists. On the other hand, let's imagine that we wanted to try to find the same word, the same item, cucumbers, in this randomly sorted list. To do this wouldn't be as easy as the list on the left. We would have to go through zucchini, apples, soup, and just keep going down this list until we eventually found cucumbers somewhere down here. Or maybe it was up here, you know. We don't know. But in the worst case, we'd have to go through this whole entire list because we don't know where cucumbers would fall because there's no order to how this list is sorted. So in this case, we could say that it is upper bounded by n. So it is O, again, is upper bounded, and n is because we have to look through all n items in the worst case to find cucumbers. So. The right list has a upper bound of O of N. Now we know two upper bounds. We know that the, the list on the left has an upper bound of O of log N. And then the list on the right, so this is the left, list on the right has an upper bound of O of N. So as a result of that, we could say that alphabetical grocery list is asymptotically faster than the randomly sorted list.